Welcome to Electron Online and now we're going to look at the resistivity in light bulbs. And yes, we're talking about the old-fashioned incandescent light bulbs. They're still in use, but more and more people are transitioning to the uh, what we call the fluorescent bulbs. They're not really bulbs, they're kind of like little curly cues. But it's a very interesting thing to go back to these old incandescent light bulbs and see how they actually work. The way they work was we put a current through the light bulb and at the very end we have like a very tiny little tungsten wire that's curled up like in a little spring-like structure. If we then take that wire and extend it, of course, it looks like a conductor, a cylindrical conductor with radius R. R is, of course, extremely small and L is relatively large because it's all coiled up. Light bulbs come in different power ratings, 40 watts, 60 watts, 100 watts are very typical light bulbs. They come in higher and lower wattage as well. That's the amount of joules per second that they, that they utilize in order to put out light. And the way they work is they kind of use Wien's law. Wien's law predicts that the wavelength of the radiation coming from an object is equal to 0.0029 divided by the temperature in Kelvin. So if you put out a high enough temperature, the radiation coming from that wire will eventually become visible light. And the objective always is, regardless of the power rating of the light bulb, they want the same color to be emanated from the light bulb. They don't want a yellow light bulb and a green light bulb and a blue light bulb. They all want to be about the same whitish yellowish color. And so therefore, we have to make sure that the ratio of the radius of the wire, the little wire that's curled up in there, relative to the length, is a certain ratio. In order to get the power to be, uh, not the power, but in order for the color to be the same, it requires that the power per unit area remains a constant, so that the, the amount of energy emanated from a very small region of that little wire is always a constant, and therefore you get the same amount of color coming from the wire, regardless of the length of the wire. Also, if we have different power ratings on the light bulb, there should be a relationship between the power ratings from one light bulb to another and the relative size of the radius of one light bulb to the radius of the other light bulb as far as the little wire inside of the light bulb is concerned. So let's see if we can figure that out. So first of all, we want to find the relationship between the radius and the length so that the power divided by the area remains a constant. Now the power consumed by any object, like a wire, is always equal to I square R. But that's not a good form of the equation for us to use because we know in all these cases the voltage will always need to be constant. When you plug in a light bulb, you know that the voltage in your home is always going to be equal to like 117 volts, somewhere between 110 and 120 volts when you live in the United States. Most of the rest of the world, they use 220 volts. But whatever it is, the voltage will be constant. So we have to change this equation to something where we have a constant voltage. So we also know from Ohm's law that I equals V divided by R. So I can replace I by V over R. When we do that, we know that the power consumed by the wire is going to be equal to V squared over R squared instead of I squared times R, which is equal to V squared over R. Now we also know that since this is a cylinder, the, rate, the, the resistance of that cylindrical conductor, because that's really what it is, even though it's coiled up, it's like a cylindrical conductor, is going to be equal to resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area. So this is going to be V squared divided by the resistivity times the length divided by the cross-sectional area, which goes to the numerator, so we can go times area, like that because otherwise it's divided by A, so I just go ahead and put that divided by A in the numerator. Whoa, lost my eraser. All right. So now let's uh, express what it is equal to, so we can say that the power, therefore, is equal to the voltage squared, which is a constant. The area will be equal to pi times the radius squared divided by the resistivity divided by L. And notice that this quantity right here has to be a constant. Pi is a constant. The resistivity will be a constant, it's made out of the same material, and the voltage is a constant. So now we see that the power is going to be equal to R squared divided by L. What about the power divided by the area? So the power divided by the area, power divided by area, but notice this area is not the same as the cross-sectional area of the conductor. This area will be the area that, that emanates the radiation in all directions, like that. So the area that will be the circumference, 2 pi r, times the length. So power divided by area, which is equal to v squared times pi over the resistivity, times r squared over l, 
times 1 over the area, and the area of course would be 2 pi r times the length. So 2 pi r times the length. Notice that this r will cancel out one of those r's, so now this becomes equal to, let's see, the pi cancels out the pi, so we have v squared divided by 2 times the resistivity. Okay, those are all the constants, and I'm left with an r in the numerator and an l squared in the denominator times r divided by l squared. So what I'm looking at here, since this is a constant, I can now say that the power per area radiating out, out the energy is equal to some constant times r divided by l squared. In other words, we then know that in order to have the uniform light being emitted from a light bulb, p divided by a, which is a constant, has to be equal to r divided by l squared. So we want to make sure that we always built the light bulbs in such a way that the radius divided by the length squared is equal to a constant. So if we double the radius, we have to quadruple the length. If we have the length, we have to, let's see, have the length, that would be four times the radius. So we want to make sure that r divided by l squared is always a constant. All right, now, what if, for example, the power of light bulb number two divided by the power of light bulb number one is equal to n. Some integer, for example, doesn't have to be an integer, it can be any number. n can be 1.5 or something like that. Let's say we have a 60 watt light bulb and a 40 watt light bulb, n would be 1.5. How does n relate to the radius and how does n relate to the length of the wire? Well, let's see here. Power can be expressed in terms of this equation right here. So that would be equal to this, that would be equal to this equation right here. So the power of one divided by the power of the other can be written as the, this divided by that. So this is equal to uh, power two, which would be V squared times pi divided by resistivity times the radius of the second light bulb squared, divide, and it wouldn't be the light bulb, it would be the little wire inside the light bulb, divided by the length inside the little light bulb. And we can say that's divided by power of the first light bulb, which is the V squared pi over resistivity. That wouldn't change between light bulbs, those are all constants, times, that would be then R1 squared divided by L1. And so this all, of course, cancels all that. And then if we rearrange things a little bit, we can write this as R sub 2 squared divided by L sub 2 times when we divide by a fraction, the same as multiply by, an in, by the inverse, it would be L1 divided by R1 squared. Okay, so N would be equal to R2 squared times L1 divided by L2 times R1 squared. All right, now we have to somehow separate the R's from the L's. And we come back over here, realizing that R divided by L squared has to be a constant. All right. So if r times l squared equals a constant, so we can say that r divided by l squared equals some sort of constant. Let's call it k. So r is equal to, oops, that's a terrible looking r. r is equal to k times l squared. With other words, I can replace every r by l squared, or I can replace every l by r squared. So I can say, well, l squared is equal to, hmm, let's see here. No, maybe I'll just leave it like that. Okay, sorry about that. I don't want to lead you astray here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace R by L squared and see what I get. All right, let's do that. So this is equal to, so instead of R, we have an R squared. That means we have K squared times L to the fourth power. So this will give me K squared times L. Of course, that will be L sub 2. And since R is L squared, whoop, I don't need a K squared. I just need a K. There we go. K times L sub 2, and that would be to the fourth power. All right, let me make sure I got this right. Since R is K times L squared, R squared would be, oh, it still would be squared, sorry, K squared times L to the fourth power times L1, because that's from over here, divided by L2, and R1 would be K squared times L1 to the fourth power. All right, now you can see that the k's cancel out. And I have an l to the 2 here, and I have l to the 2 to the fourth power. So this cancels out, this becomes to the third power. I have l1 to the fourth power, l1. This cancels out, this becomes to the third power. So you can see that this would be equal to l of the second light bulb cubed divided by 
L of the first light bulb cubed, and that would be equal to N. So the ratio of the power to the light bulbs will be equal to the ratio of the length of the wire cubed. Or I can then say from that, I can say that L of the second light bulb divided by L to the first light bulb is equal to N to the one third power because what I did was I took the cube root of this I took the cube root of this and so the ratio of the length is, is equal to the power ratio of the light bulbs to the one third power well what about the ratio of the radii all right so what we can do now is since we now know the ratio of the length we know that length is equal to r uh, let's see here what we can say from this equation hmm if I take the Square root of both sides, I have the square root of R equals the square root of K times L. I can now replace L by the square root of R divided by the square root of K. So that means this can be equal to L sub 2, which is the square root of R sub 2 divided by the square root of K and I divide this by L sub 1, which would be the square root of R1, the cube root of the square root of R1 divided by the square root of K, and that would be equal to what? That would be equal to n to the one third, right? What is that equal to? Well, this cancels out. I can say that the square root of R sub 2 divided by the square root of R sub 1 equals n to the one third. If I now square both sides, I can then say that n to the two-thirds is equal to the ratio of r sub 2 divided by r sub 1. And there's the other ratio right there. So what I did was, since n to the one-third can be written as this, because L is r, the square root of r divided by square root of k. So L2 is the square root of r2 divided by square root of k. R1 is a square, L1 is equal to the square root of r1 divided by square root of k. The square root of k's cancel out. So n to the one-third equals this. Square both sides, n to the third, two thirds equals to r2 divided by r1 because when you square the radical, the radical disappears. And now we see that the ratio of the length between two light bulbs is equal to the ratio of the power to the one third and the ratio of the radius of the two light bulbs, or at least the radius of the wire, is equal to the ratio of the power to the two thirds. And so there's a very specific way in which light bulbs need to be constructed so that the Power per unit area is equal to constant, meaning that no matter what the power rating of the light bulb is, you emanate the same color of light. Quite amazing, and all that technology will no longer be needed if, we dis if these types of light bulbs disappear and we start using nothing but fluorescent light bulbs. But that may be a while before all of these types of light bulbs are gone. So, in the meanwhile, enjoy the old technology.